What's up guys, welcome to your 10th 3D Studio Max tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you guys about editable objects and sub-objects. Now, we already created one type of object, and let's go ahead and let me demonstrate that. Just like a basic sphere or something. And what these basic geometric objects are called, they're called parametric objects. And that's all we've been creating so far. So, if you're wondering why they're called this, well, if you go in this modify panel, how you edit these objects is basically through parameters like radius or segments, hemisphere, slices, but it doesn't really give you a lot of control over each one of the individual points like this one up here. We can't really grab one of these points and stretch it out, um, not with parametric objects at least. If we want to do that and have precise control over each one of these points, what we need to do is convert this object to an editable object. And to do that, what you need to do is select your object. So go ahead and select it. Right click it. And I just want to tell you this. I cannot show you guys how to do this because when I right click, my screen recorder will shut off for some reason. So I'm just going to tell you guys how to do this. And what you need to do is select your object, right click it. Then when you right click it, there's going to be a menu. Click convert to and then click convert to editable mesh. So again, right click, convert to, convert to editable mesh. And again, I can't do it or my uh, screen recorder will shut off. So I'll pause this and I'll catch up with you in a second. All right, so I just right clicked it, press converted and converted to edible mesh. Sorry, I had to pause it. Sorry, you couldn't see, but hey, that's what you get. And as you can see, instead of your parameters under your modify panel, this all changes to your editable parameter or not parameters editable rollouts instead so instead of parameters you have selection soft selection and all these things well the first thing I want to show you guys is this sub object so under editable mesh in your drop down list you have all these sub objects right here and what sub objects are are pretty much the pieces that make up your object or model and for example if you click vertex you can see all the vertexes that make up your model if you can see edges you see all the edges that make it up so let's go ahead and we're going to be working with the vertexes of this since it's most it's the most apparent one on a sphere and before i do that i want to go over something called normals so go down here and click show normals and probably need to get your object selected and now when you click show normals and select your object you see all of these lines popping out of your sphere what normals are is whenever you're working in editing and editable mode you can sometimes get twisted up and you can't really tell what sides the face and what sides the back so what normals do is they show you what side the face is so these normals are lines that always point away from the face so if you don't see a line you don't see the face in these lines they don't get rendered out so if you want to work with them and then render it out you won't see it in your final but I usually work with them off unless I get twisted up. So that's a real quick tutorial. So now that we're working with vertexes, we can see all of the vertexes of our element. So we can edit each of these vertexes just like we would any other, you know, part of our element. So let's go ahead and click like select and move tool or something. And we can go ahead and grab a vertex and move it up just like that. So again, just like I said, instead of you know having parameters to the whole thing we can work with these individual points just like that and we can uh, you know anything that we could do before we can do these individual points and that brings me to my next click away from that you can leave that point up if you want so that brings me to my next topic and that is what is called soft selection you can see soft selection over here and it's really useful when you're working with individual points so let me actually spin this around so we can work with the other side what soft selection does is it allow you to work with surrounding points so instead of just working with a vertex and getting it pointy all the time it gives you a more natural way of working with points so let's go ahead and use soft selection and I'll tell you guys what this means the edge distance is pretty much the range of what you're going to be working with so go ahead and move that up to actually we probably need to select something first move that up to like um, two three 
probably like five or something and what this does is it gives you five vertexes away from the center vertex so that's the area that's going to be affected the fall off we don't really need to know um, the fall off is pretty much the region um, spherical and the pinch is pretty much you can see here let me let me go ahead and apply a transformation real quick and as you can see instead of just a huge womp and tomp and point we get this nice more natural pull out with a soft selection so we can go ahead and move this selection around and now that you see what soft selection is instead of just working with a single vertex let me see if I get a good angle right there um, now I can go ahead and explain the rest of these parameters the pinch and I guess it's easier just to look at this little chart right here this chart is a preview of what your soft selection is going to do. The pinch is pretty much the pointiness of your soft selection. So if we increase the pinch, it'll increase the pointiness. Let's bring that back down to zero. And the bubble is the roundness. So if we increase the bubble, it increases the roundness. So let's go ahead and bring that back down to zero. And now let's work one with a high pinch. So I'm going to make a pointy, probably somewhere about 71 right there and now let's go ahead and pull out one with a pinch so go ahead and select a vertex and pull out one and as you can see this one is a lot more pinched than the other one so that is pretty much why soft selection is useful so again instead of working with individual points um, you can work with soft selection and select a range of vertexes or points and this gives you a more natural way of working with objects um, again pinch is the pointiness bubble is the roundness and I guess that's it for this tutorial so thank you guys for watching hopefully you learned a little bit about sub objects and how you can use them to edit the fine points of your objects so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time